Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. On the return, here's Jerome Ford. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. Just six games played for Watson in his debut season with the Browns, which really limited how much he could step into the franchise quarterback role for the team. But he gets a full slate to do so this season. Remember, his last year in Houston, over 4,800 yards. They expect excellence from him. They will start this drive with Ford, and he'll get this just across the 25-yard line. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Ball at the 26, second and seven. Again, they turn to Ford. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. Back to throw, Watson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. And Deshaun Watson, and when you think about the toughest quarterbacks in the league to game plan against, he's got to be in your top five, does he not? And when you talk about game planning, putting him in the top five, that's an easy call because he can make every throw. That's not an issue at all. He has great touch delivering the football, but that mobility, that added dimension, oh, when he escapes the pocket and those receivers find their way open, short, medium, and long, he finds the right guy. Last but not least, his toughness. He can stand in the pocket, take a hit, and deliver. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and ten. Now it's Watson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll take the block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. Watson looks to throw again. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Blowing that play up, Roquan Smith as he gets the sack. How about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Fielded just inside the 20. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made him the highest-paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. 
And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. And Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Now it's Jackson. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Yeah, good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. And Jackson going to hold on to it again. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. They go play action with Jackson. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Bateman's got it on the crossing route right here. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. First and goal from just inside the five. Edwards. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Again, it'll be Edwards. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. And they'll try to pound it in with your card. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Patrick Ricard taking it in from two yards out. And the Ravens are on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Here now a third down and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. Throwing on third down, Watson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. No surprise to see a sideline fired up by that big play. Heck, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. On first and 10, Watson. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Jadevi and Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. Well, we've seen how this quarterback can beat you with his legs. Saw it earlier on this drive, as a matter of fact. But that time, they had him covered. They really gave him no place to escape because oftentimes they're able to find a crack, a sliver, anything that can get them upfield. On that occasion, nothing open at all, and they swarmed him. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Watson now to throw. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be a third and about 13. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Browns on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Right back to Njoku. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Fourth down on is Corey Bajorquez to punt. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. 
This could end up being a pretty big drive. I mean, look, yes, it's early in this game, but they scored the touchdown. They got the stop. And now if they could get in the end zone here again, CD, they could grab an early stranglehold on this one. Yeah, they certainly can. And that's what you're looking for. Where's the advantage? Can you gain it? Can you press it? Now for them, finishing it off because right now it's out there for them. They've just got to go seize it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll use his blockers to get this up over the 20 to the 21. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. On second down, Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Martin Emerson. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. So this defense coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. After the interception, here's Watson. And that is taken in by Njoku. Touchdown, Browns! Deshaun Watson on target to David Njoku. And the Browns are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Ravens offense getting set and ready for this next drive. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. 
And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It was Denzel Ward in from his corner spot there to take him down for the loss. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Up the middle, it's Hill. Shifts past him at the 45, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. A lot depend on the spot there, and he got it, but it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mike Andrews, the tight end. And Andrews going to have a Ravens first down as he'll get this down to the 40. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up. It's seven. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. Jackson. A little short one there, caught by Likely. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Jackson will throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. The Browns' D locked in on third down, brings up fourth. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. And they're going to at least line up to go for it here on fourth down. Now it's Jackson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Here's Watson. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down.
The Browns try to get back and set quickly here. Time ticking away. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. First down, Watson. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. He finds his man complete. It's four. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. This second and four. Back to throw, Watson. Throw out wide is incomplete. NFL quarterbacks work so hard on their mechanics, and they do so much repetition in practice, offseason, the whole deal. They expect it to be autopilot once the games start. That way it eliminates any type of pressure of the game, pressure of people in your face, all of that. That didn't shine through on that throw, though, did it? No. A little bit of a dangerous pass and off target, too. Work in the middle of the field, he's got a man complete. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Hopkins' kick is good, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks at Taylor's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. A good, tight football game thus far. 10-7 the score as we resume action on EA Sports. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. 
This is a game, Charles, that's been fairly starved for offense. Really not much in that first half. We'll see if they can get something going here as we look toward the third quarter. And not just a chance to finally get a little more offense going, but to erase that small deficit they currently trail by. I think they'd send a pretty powerful message to the opposite sideline if they drive it right down the field coming out of the half. They start the second half with Hill. A nice little juke. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. Jackson options out left. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. And this is one of those plays that if he can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. On first and 10, it's Jackson. That one into the hands of Flowers. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it second down. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Now, we all know that an offense coordinator and a quarterback, they're aligned at the hip. But when you've got a runner who can get you that kind of yardage, that guy's invaluable. And they run the option here on first and 10. What a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And a solid job using his legs. 16 yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now second and three. Now Jackson. Over the middle complete. It's Flowers. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. Jackson options out left and he'll go down here at the 12 yard line it'll be a pickup of five on the keeper it's second down a little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game now like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get so he did a nice job of protecting himself took care of the football took what the defense gave him if they continue to allow him to do that they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Throwing is Jackson. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. They'll run here with Edwards. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Good work there, holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And they will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Patrick Ricard with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens have retaken a third quarter lead. And that's why you have the fullback. Charles couldn't get it in the play before with a smaller guy, turned to a little more power, they score it. And now it has to warm the hearts of a lot of old school football fans. They love when they get to see a little bit of power football. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And they'll be working from behind now following the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive of the half. I think the guys right now, as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on one big key. They don't have to do anything differently just because they're down on the scoreboard now. The intent, still the same in what they plan to do on offense. Now a first down throw, Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. This is Ford. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Third and eight. Now Watson. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. He's certainly one of those quarterbacks that can burn you with his mobility, but that time able to hem him in and get him to the ground. Perfect descriptor right there about how they kept him in the pocket. Excellent job of containment, but they were still able to continue to bring such strong pressure without letting him escape. But how about those guys in the secondary as well? Kept the coverage tight, plastered to the receivers, and left no real options for him to throw it downfield. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and ten. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. 
And they're going option play on third down. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. Jackson now. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and eleven. Now it's Jackson. And a quick throw there is incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Jackson. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Here's more on the return. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. With the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. To throw is Watson. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. They run with Ford. Adafe Owe there on the tackle. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Here's second and five now from the 37. Here's Watson. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Third and two, Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. 
This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They will indeed snap it to Watson. And this is caught. He hits more. And he's going to pick up the Browns' first down as the defense couldn't come up with a big play. In fact, they got six more than they needed, a gain of eight on fourth and two. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Down to about the 23. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. On the ground, it's four. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll try and run for it. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll start by running the option to the right. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. From the 35, back to work on second and four. They run once more with Edwards. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. 
He'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So now it's Watson and the Browns down 14-10, a minute 46 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's Watson. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. This is where, of course, it's good to have a veteran quarterback under center. You would just be able to put on one of those blood pressure clips, and nothing would be different for him. He's done it many times before, expects to get it accomplished again. Watson to throw. He finds his man complete. It's four. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got a hustle. They got to get to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and 10. Now Watson. Gets this to Moore. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. It didn't check off every box but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Watson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. Absolutely ideal there. Get a good size play, get out of bounds. Well, you saw the coaching there. That is taught, and it is emphasized. Get out of bounds, understand your situation, as well as just understanding the game. This is first and ten. to throw. Watson. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Watson. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. But that incompletion reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Watson now to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock.
Well, this offense cannot stop the clock now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. Now it's Watson. And that is taken in by Njoku. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. One last throw here for Watson. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Partner, what a finish to this one. I mean, this offense, they had it down there inside the red zone, but ultimately couldn't execute that final snap to find the end zone. Yeah, and they're going to walk away from this one. And you know what's going to go through their heads the entire time until they get to play again. If we could only have that final snap to do over one more time, maybe with a different play call. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.